everybody, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if this is your first time here. And yes, it is the most wonderful time of the year. It's Christmas in July. Uh, I'm not doing full Christmas in July this year because um, by the time I was done last year, I was uh, not in a jolly mood at all. So we're just going to do five Saturdays worth of Christmas books from years gone by. This one is Christmas of Southern Living from 1999. Um, as a um, precursor to this, let me just say, if you see something in here that you really like and I make fun of it, do not take it personally. We are reading these books because they are dated. If you love putting a bunch of oranges on top of your cheesecake and I make fun of it, that is not a personal attack on you. I had a lot of people last year be very opinionated about my opinions. So I'm just putting it out there. Peace and love to all of you. Whatever you like, you like. These are not meant to be taken seriously. These are not a personal attack on you, your family, your belief system, your grandmother. Okay, there we go. Let's look at Christmas Southern Living. I got this, hmm, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago at Goodwill in Slidell because they don't upcharge everything like my local Goodwill does. So this book was only a dollar. When was this? When was Christmas? Christmas is on a Saturday in 1998. It is 1998, right? 1999. Cool. Wasn't Christmas just on a Saturday like last year? Or the year before? Maybe. Alright. First of all, let me go back to the cover here because I saw something. I believe these are all cheesecakes. Um, <clears throat> this one got like cream cheese, uh, some, some kind of frosting. This has got like some weird jelly thing, oranges. Malted milk balls, maybe? Coconut? Um, cherries? Pecans? You know how many calories are in just four of these peppermints? And then they're on top of a piece of cheesecake that's also covered in some kind of topping and more candies? <sighs> I don't remember if Paula Deen was around in 1999, but I assume this is her fault. Commander deals. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but hey, I got the glare right the first time. I'm proud of myself. I think this is the first time I'm doing one at, the, at this table, too. Yeah, because I moved here after New Year's and haven't done a book review since. Season celebrations, decorating for the holidays, holiday fair, gifts of the season, patterns, sources, index, contributors. It's the season to be jolly. And you will be with the inspiring pages, inspiring ideas for decorations and a delicious make-ahead menu for Christmas feast. If I'm like reading bad and you're like, wow, he's really terrible at reading, it's because for you not to have glare in the video, I have to have glare all over the page. So that's what that is. I'm just like, I'm swinging back and forth trying to read this. Is that clear right there? I don't know. Okay. This is like, uh, a generously decorated colorful tree nestles inside the graceful curve of the entryway staircase. Tree trimmings include gold stars hung from gold ribbons. Ball ornaments, velvet grapes in red and lime. Where? Close studded lemons and yellow oncidium orchids. That's weird. Where are the grapes at? I don't see grapes. Oh, here they are. Okay, that's like one thing of grapes. Oh, I love Bells of Ireland. I tried to grow bells at these are Bells of Ireland if anybody was like, what is he talking about now? Also with the orchids, like... Orchid, not a Christmas, uh, not a Christmas, not a Christmas flower to me. Bells of Ireland, yellow orchid, red marjon roses, same color as the walls. Okay. This is like the Christmas that I like because this, this reminds me so much of like Martha Stewart Christmas. Remember she said those Christmas specials that came on CBS? And like her Christmas, when her, her Christmas show was on and they had the Christmas shows, 
like she did a lot of this like very um I don't even know what style this is just like very gilded very uh gaudy I guess not really but like in a way but this is on the front door okay make ahead Christmas menu these are always fun because there's like company rice like hey honey can you make some company rice for dinner tonight what is that who would have a bush noel and a pumpkin chest pie and we're having Cabernet Sauvignon and coffee. If you don't like either one of those, you don't drink. Y'all miss at the beginning of this video before I actually start. Well, I record it, but I'm not going to leave it in there. I just downed an entire bottle of Powerade. Okay, for our dinner, a week ahead, we're going to prepare and freeze the herb fan tan dinner rolls. Herb, uh, prepare and freeze herb fan tan dinner rolls. Fan tan dinner, what is that? I don't know what that is. Uh, three week, three days ahead, purchase all the ingredients. Two days ahead, prepare and chill stained glass salad. What? Prepare a bouche de Noel, store in an airtight container, set and decorate table, and then don't use it for the next two days. Prepare company rice and slow cooker, unmold and garnish stained glass salad. I gotta see this, and I wanna see these herb. Two hours ahead, thaw herb fantan rolls dinner in a bag at room temperature. Bake one hour head baked beef tenderloin. Should you be cooking that a little earlier than an hour before you're gonna eat? 30 minutes ahead, baked sweet potatoes with cranberry sauce. Okay, let's see. Um, company rice. It's wild rice, butter, mushrooms, green onion, salt, chicken broth, sherry, and almonds. Okay glazed onions like pearl onions are the same as regular onions basically they're just smaller I had bought them one time I bought a bag and I was like I'm gonna put these in beef stew and I made beef stew and they were terrible I was like this is awful I never want to eat these again and I have it who is blanching pearl onions it's like if you'd like you can save time by pur purchasing frozen pearl onions clearly oh Look how beautiful that is, this stained glass abomination. Water, white grape flavor or lemon flavor. Ginger ale, grapes, oranges, um, pineapple. Green leaf lettuce, garnish with red seedless grape clusters. Okay, I mean it's jello with some fruit in it. Calm down, Southern Living. Place about eight green beans on each blanched carrot strip and tie once. Carefully transfer to baking dish. Can you imagine if we did think so, te like if we were so tedious about holiday meals today? Like, oh honey, dinner's almost ready. I just have to finish tying these eight green beans together with a strip of blanched carrot. If somebody served that to me, I'd be like, you have too much time on your hands. You need to volunteer for the homeless or the children. That red wall is something else. Who is it? Is that Harry Connick Jr.? Who is that? Ray Jordan, who never loses the spirit of his favorite season, has an important bit of advice. Cherish the ritual of decorating the tree, of rediscovering favorite ornaments, and the memories they evoke. When you finish decorating, turn off the lights, plug in the tree, and enjoy the season. Well, uh, Ray Jordan, he sounds like he's got a lot of time on his hands. I swear we saw these in another book. Ray, are they reusing your material and thinking I'm not going to notice? This used to be my dream Christmas tree with all the hand-blown glass ornaments. And I had it for one year, and then the hurricane came. Um, a lot of Christmas, this, this says right here, Christopher Radko. Um, I still have a bunch of them. I tried to bring it back a couple years ago, but I was like, I, I don't have the money for this. And it's not really my style anymore. Also, uh, Ray, why is the bottom of your tree not decorated? Huh? When you sit back and look at your tree at night, is that just... You just don't look at that section that has no ornaments on it? 
20 strands of bead garlands, 40 strands of lights, and some 2,000 ornaments, including an extensive collection of Christopher Radko glass ornaments and souvenirs from Ray's travels. Ugh, that wall color is like... What is this nonsense? A profusion of long stem Gloriosa lilies making an exceptional centerpiece. Yeah, when you don't want to look at the person sitting across from you. How do you see... You, you, you can barely talk to the person sitting next to you. How are you going to talk to the ones across from you? Which, I mean, I guess that's a way to not get into too many family arguments. Activity scene. I'm not religious, like at all. Raised Catholic, not anymore. I love a nativity scene. It's just my mom had one. Um... I remember playing with her and she was like, don't, don't play with baby Jesus or Adam, where's baby Jesus? And I'll be like, he's on the bookcase with the donkey because there was a donkey and I love donkeys. And as you go over there and baby Jesus would be like precariously balanced on top of the donkey. They're having a fun time. Okay. Let Jesus live a little. Magnolia leaves, pine balls, Nandina berries. Apples, oranges. This is pretty. But I am wondering, are those artichokes or are those actually the magnolia? What, what is this? Could you tell me if they're artichokes or not? I don't think they're artichokes. I think these are supposed to be like the, the, um, the cones, the, uh, I don't know if y'all have made that. They're everywhere right now, and they are blooming the same time as jasmine and gardenia down here. So every time I step outside, my head explodes. But these kind of look like the little seed pods they make, which is weird because they're blooming right now, and these are on trees. So how do you have these at Christmas? Pretty. I got topiaries. David Santana invites you to, he's probably friends with Ray Jordan, invites you to a fireside chat. The topic is a bountiful harvestry created especially for our readers. I kind of like that. I don't like that yellow all over it. It's kind of like a big basket of fruit. That'd be me. I'd be like, this is my Carmen Miranda tree. Tied to the tree with raffia, a basket full of shiny apples brightens a dark spot. That's not bad. Okay, David, calm down. Why are all these walls? Is this the same house that has this horrific red wall? It's like this person went to Home Depot and they were like, what color can we get you? And she's like, um, I would like my living room, dining room to be the color of the blood of the innocents. Virgin blood. That's what I would like. And they're like, okay, that's Sherwin Williams number 947. Okay, this is the same mantle. They're just dressing it up differently. Do people still paint their houses like this with these bright, like... I'm telling you. My house, everything is beige. Everything. It's not the color of beige that I would have picked, but it's beige. And if I hadn't... If I, if I would have picked a color, it would be a slightly different color of beige. I mean, it's like, if you try to do anything besides, like, neutral decorations, that wall would just, like, clash with it horribly. Oh, this is what they call over the top? <laughs> Please, Southern Living. Bright 
improve your candles. Moss and ribbon candle holders. That seems a little bit precarious. This sounds kind of boring, y'all. I'm just like, mm. oh, beyond red and green. Here we go, some color. See, this would look good in the murder walls, but now they have it with like a yellow, yellow striped wallpaper and oak furniture. One of my biggest pet peeves, like I hate furniture. Like if you, like if you, um, you go to a store and there's like the dining room set that has like the table, the chairs that matches the hutch that matches the, um, credenza thing that matches like the buffet. I don't like that at all. Like when everything matches. But I like even less when it's like, here's our chairs that are wood. This, the floors are different wood. This is a different wood. This is painted wood. I don't know what I'd like less. But I think I, I think I like them, everything that matches less. Just because I'm like, you bought this, like you literally just walked into a store and said, I'll take that one, wrap it up. But sometimes that looks good. And I guess it's a lot easier than being like, I'm going to go and take three years to find the perfect table and then another year to find the perfect chairs and then another year to have those reupholstered. This is kind of cute, which is like the kumquats and stuff hanging from the chandelier. Are these upholstery tags? Yeah, upholstery tags hold ribbons in place and release its citrusy scent. That's pretty. And probably a lot easier than using the damn clothes. I found a big jar of clothes the other day when I was cleaning and I gave it to my mom. She's like, what is this doing in here? I said, I don't know. And she's like, well, why did you have clothes in here? And I was like, mom, I don't know. She said, was it for mice? And I was like, no. And I couldn't remember that. I was like, wait, we made palm anders. At some point we made palm anders during the life of this channel. These candles are hideous. I don't know who told them those look good. Does anybody know where I can get wild y'all pawn berries? Icicle ornaments, napkin rings, no so noel. Okay. I like this. Kind of like a bulky, bulky kind of feeling. I like these suckers. Or those candies. They look like suckers. Either way, I like them. This is, I mean, like, this could be cute. Like this kind of idea thing. But like all of this is unwrapped. I hate anything that wastes food. Like if you're going to do this, make sure you can take it apart at the end of the party or the end of the season and like eat it. Like see this, this is all like, like, I guess you could break this apart and eat it, but do you want to eat it after it's been sitting out for the past two weeks for Christmas? Stockings. Holiday fair. What is this? I gotta look at these people now. Nanny smothered quail. Gross. Forever and a duck. One of my most memorable Christmas dinners centered on a trio of ducks all orange, ducklings all orange, that ended up taking us most of the day to prepare. Of course you did, it was the 90s. The long list of ingredients and multi-step preparations, preparation procedure have become more memorable than the end product. We enjoyed the shared effort as the recipe's complicated stuff slowly became humorous, as in, oh no, you mean we have to make a sock? Now that I think of it, I believe it was a recipe from Julia Child. Okay, Kate Greer. You think a Julia Child recipe is going to be easy? And why would you cook that for the first time on Christmas? Joe Watts. My mother always baked a ham on Christmas Eve afternoon to take to my grandparents' house on Christmas Day. Though it was to serve along with the chicken and dressing, she always sliced just enough of the warm ham, with the warm ham to make sandwiches for dinner. The scent of ham baking in a warm ham sandwich always mean Christmas Eve to me. That's nice. Oh, I wish I had a ham sandwich. Boiled 
custard meets Christmas in my family. Okay, Virginia, I'm not even reading the rest of that because I feel bad for you. Our family always holds its family reunion the Saturday before Christmas because the date never changes. Invitations really aren't necessary, which means holiday planning easier for the family. We decided years ago to forgo the exchange and gifts so the reunion centers around the meal. The menu stays the same year after year. I'm, I'm just like, what is boiled custard? Now I'm curious. Boiled Christmas pudding. Boiled custard means Christmas in my family. First I serve formally at the dinner table. But later, leftovers are put on the bottom shelf of the refrigerator in a large bowl with a teacup so that children can help themselves. What do you do? Just scoop it onto the teacup? I'm not a custard person. Look at these two. They're happy. When I was a little girl, I always wanted to be in the kitchen because it was warm and that's where my mother was. You never lose that feeling. Dolly Parton. Well, that is true, Dolly. And thank you for um, curing... The Corolla virus. The Toyota Corolla. Oyster dressing, skillet cornbread, a slow cooker lasagna, fast break chili. I'm, I'm not interested in it. Fruited chicken ragu. Ooh, ooh. It's like <sighs> these things have like the worst names. Mediterranean frittata. Kalamata olives, I'm out. I'm done. We're not looking at anything else on that page because of the, they had to mention disgusting olives. Y'all know how I feel about olives? Does anybody know why I feel the way I feel about olives? Have you been watching the channel long enough to know that one time I ordered a pizza from a local pizza place and I got it and I was so hungry and I bit into it and I was eating it and there was a cigarette butt stuck inside of an olive and I ate it and put it in my mouth and I spit the cigarette butt out and I haven't been able to eat olives since. Thank you, Ben's Pizza. Breakfast buffet. We do breakfast every year for Christmas. It's my favorite. Country grits. Oh, and I'll be right next to my mom's house this year. Oh, that's nice. My mom will be just across the street from me. Well, a couple streets over, but still so much closer. Country grits and sausage casserole. No thanks. Chicken pecan. Quiche. No. Caramel nut pull apart bread. What kind of nuts? Probably pecans. Looks like it. A walnuts don't eat either. Assorted fruit platter, overnight Bloody Marys, orange juice and coffee. All right, I like the orange juice and the coffee. And I like the grits. Prosciutto wrapped shrimp. BLT dippers. What the hell is that? What's a BLT dipper? Mayo, sour cream, bacon, tomatoes, and endive. Okay. That, wait. Okay. So it's, it's just mayo and bacon and tomatoes served on bitter endive leaves. Yummy. Or with Melba toast. So something either bitter or so sharp it cuts your mouth all up. I hate Melba toast. Crisp potato wedge with caviar. <sighs> you guys. What I tell you. My affinity for row of any kind is ridiculous. I was at a party one time and they had caviar and nobody, everybody was like, mm, this caviar. I sat there and like every couple of minutes it had passed by and I like scooped some up into a cracker and walked away. And then I was like, oh, I don't feel so good. And I was like, oh God, I just ate like three ounces of caviar. Good times. I love caviar. I love caviar. I love salmon row. I just, I love... Anything, any, I love eggs. All kind of eggs. Crab stuffed peppers. What's this all about? Crab meat, a half a pound. Okay. Green onions, plum tomato, basil or parsley. I like how they're interchangeable, even though they both completely taste like two different things. Mayo, lemon juice, hot sauce, green peppers, fresh basil again. Okay. That sounds good. Cut peppers into one and a half inch strip for vice. Oh, oh, you put, okay, you put it on the, where is the picture of it? I want to look at it. Is there a picture of it? No. Damn it. 
Southern Wedding. Jerks. It must be like a raw pepper with just a set. That sounds good. Christmas tree bread. Oh, here's the fan tan rolls that I'm supposed to prepare three and a half months before Christmas. I'm supposed to prepare this on the 4th of July for Christmas Day. It's literally, I have to do this so far in ahead, and it's literally a package of refrigerated loaf bread. We, we, we tested with Pillsbury Homestyle. Really? Lazy Southerners. Pesto provolone batter bread. Heirloom cookies. Food styling has come such a long way. Like this, just nothing on this page looks appetizing except maybe the coffee. because they're like hey we're doing cookies let's make sure we put like a bunch of ribbon on the table and like some holly in the back and a postcard that matches the cup first how how was that what all right whatever we're not gonna dwell springerly i have a a really nice copper or springerly mold it's a 12 days of christmas and one year i was like i'm gonna make this and i made it and the whole thing stuck and it took me like two weeks of like gently scrubbing the plant, the pan to not like scratch it because it was copper to get everything out. And I've never made it again, which is probably good because they're not the most delicious cookies. Three large eighths, two cups of sugar, two cups of grated lemon rind, half a teaspoon of anise. I love anise. Two and three quarters of flour, quarter teaspoon baking soda, vegetable cooking spray. Like, how do you make this if you do, like, you'd have to go out and find a springerly mold, right? And they're using a wooden one at that. Is that something you could just get on Amazon? I think William Sonoma sells them. I shouldn't, I shouldn't, like, be so dismissive. Pecan, I hate pecan. Oof. Ambrosia trifle. It's a pudding. Sour cream. Mm. Upside down date pudding. That doesn't sound too bad. It's probably got nuts in it though. Yep, walnuts. Pitted dates, water, sugar, brown sugar, butter, egg, flour, baking soda, baking powder, salt, walnuts, boiling water, sweetened whipped cream. That's not bad. I like sticky things like dates and prunes. Oh, it's that chocolate boost in Noel. They always chuckle when I'm thinking of Martha Stewart's Burst in Noel, which is white. I don't know. Either way, that's ugly. Spice steamed pudding with maple sauce. Here's the, yeah, this is a cheesecake sampler. Spoon one can ready made cream cheese frosting into microwave bowl. Microwave and have 30 seconds until almost melted and starable. Combine frosting and crushed peppermint candy, stir, spread over slice, place whole pillow shaped peppermint candies around the crust is that crust's edge. Come on. Cafe au lait. Which one's Cafe au lait? This one, I guess. This looks good. Oh, this one's got pecans, walnuts, almonds, eggnog custard with candy cherries. Sugar, vanilla, salt, half and half bourbon, ground nutmeg, and candy cherries. Can't get much easier than that. Ooh. What is that? Is that like peppercorns? All of, yeah. I'm just, I'm like, it looks good, but at the same time, like, ugh. Every time I look at something like this, I'm like, oh, well, it'd be nice to go to like a party and have that. But then I, like, I can imagine like fixing it for dinner and then just like sitting across from my sister and hearing her like flick every peppercorn off the thing because it, it's it's weird. Tawny baked ham. I don't know what that means. Roast duck. I love a good duck. I love a good mandarin duck. Sweet 
So fatty though. So greasy. What is this? Lemon's and turkey. This literally looks like like gummy candy. French green beans with orange shallot butter. Glazed beets with cloves and port. Thank you, Southern Livings. You made a you made a way to make you found a way to make beets worse. Wilted winter greens. Because everybody loves a good wilted wilted green, right? Black eyed peas. Ugh. Gingerbread. Oh, ginger ginger. <laughs> I thought it said gingerbread pears. Ginger pears and acorn squash. You know, gingerbread pears sounds better. The gifts of the season. All these kids need teeth. That's what you need to give them. No presents. Monogram these. Personalized ornaments. Okay. Initial wreath. In a corset. Weird wrapping paper. Monogram napkins. What is this nonsense? What is this nonsense? Ribbon ornaments. Ribbon wreath. Ribbon tree. That's something. Kitchen topiaries. So this is just a, a bunch of a bunch of um, bulbs of garlic glued to a topiary form. C can I use this? I mean, like, the thing about this is you give this to somebody and you're like, okay, every, need, every time you need a bay leaf, you can rip it off of there and throw it in the gumbo. I don't know what else I'll use bay leaves for. I don't use bay leaves. I don't think I have bay leaves in my house at all. But eventually, you pull so many off that you have like a bald spot. And also, do I want to use something that's been sitting out on my counter? I mean, I know it's already dried and it's not like it's going to go stale. Or, but it's just... Mm. No cooked food gifts. Quick fruited salsa. syrup nope lemon berry syrup one cup of strawberry jam a half a cup of frozen lemonade concentrate thawed and undiluted one cup of frozen blackberries really georgia peach honey cup of honey three quarters of a cup of peach jam a quarter cup of orange juice is this what i'm looking at here wow a half a cup of frozen lemonade concentrate that's a lot of lemony that's like a lemony snicket. Coffee to go. Shoe shine box. Wrapped in style. Southern living. Do not, do not, do not try me. I am in no mood today. Canned goods. What are these? Old Pringles. Empty potato chip can. Did I call it? Pringles. Pouches, frame for giving, Christmas tins, quick gifts, peppermint wraps. That, that's a gift. Christmas cones, potpourri pillows. I get like these as quick gifts, but you want me to like gl hot glue together a pillow filled with potpourri as a last minute gift? Last minute gift is like, you just told me you're coming to my party and I don't have anything for you. In which case, you're welcome to take one of the many wreaths off my wall. Making a garland. Monogram napkins. Am I supposed to stitch that? I didn't read the directions. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so. That wasn't so bad. My favorite holiday recipe is definitely the wilted greens. It really felt like Christmas when Mother brought out the um, ducklings all orange. So that is Christmas Southern Living 1998. Wasn't that exciting? I still can't get over this. This is, when I picked this book up at Goodwill, I showed my sister and I was like, "Look at this." She's like, "That looks good." I was like, "That looks like a coronary waiting to happen." That looks like what Wilford Burnley used to eat, and that's, now he's got the burritos. <sighs> so do I. Oh, what a world. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Um, 
links to Etsy, Patreon, Instagram, Venmo. I think that's it. Down below. And uh, I'll see you guys next Saturday for another fun-filled book review.